There are many signs that point to the market falling off a cliff over the coming years. In this video, I will cover all of them. I will close the video out also with an indication of recession that has been correct each time it's been signaled since 1969, and unfortunately, we're getting a signal here now. So with that being said, let's go right into the video. The NASDAQ has been on an insane first half run, so we've risen over 32%, and this is the best first half the NASDAQ has had since 1983. The Fed has raised rates to the highest level in more than 22 years in reaction to high inflation. So when rates go up, economic activity is restricted and higher rates are charged for things like business loans, auto loans, and mortgages. The scariest part about it all, though, is the Fed started raising rates just in March of 2022. The general rule of thumb is it takes about 18 to 24 months for rate hikes to be felt in the real economy, meaning the Fed started raising rates 17 months ago, and we haven't seen any effects of, of rate hikes in the economy yet, so that could be a shoe that is going to drop and really hurt the markets and the general U.S. economy. Also, inflation really isn't done, which could force the Fed's hand to continue rate hikes. And a big example of that is energy prices have been quite sticky. We, ha we just had OPEC this week come out and say they will stick to production cuts. The oil market is a market built on supply and demand like any other market. So a, a drop in supply will eventually raise oil prices. The reason this is so important is energy prices are a massive driver of inflation because the cost of energy affects the cost of any good or service. So for example, the loaf of bread you make with your sandwich on, that has to be trucked in from another state or country. What does that truck run on? gas. So if gas prices jump 30%, the cost of transportation for your food jumps. So your food prices much go, must go up in reaction to higher costs. And the same thing is for, for labor. Let's say you're working a hotel hospitality job and you used to be able to drive to work for 10 bucks, but now it costs 15. Well, now you're going to demand a higher wage from your employer. So it really affects so many things throughout the economy. And then an, another big headwind for the market is that Fitch downgrade we just got. I understand Warren Buffett said it wasn't a big deal, but I'm going to tell you why I think it is somewhat relevant. So the downgrade comes in response to how the U.S handled the debt ceiling situation two months ago and rising interest rates payments on its debt. Currently, the U.S. government is paying $1 trillion to, to service its debt, which is the highest interest cost in history. The interest payment cost has doubled in just three years. So if we're paying more on our debt and debt continues to increase, how are we going to be able to pay back our responsibilities how are we going to be able to pay back our debt and that that is why that Fitch downgrade came in another big cause of that downgrade is the fact that we've seen taxes tax income actually drop so the government is getting less money as it has to pay more money so state and local income tax saw a 80 billion dollar drop this year which is the largest drop we have seen since 2008. In fact, the last two times we saw a drop in salt taxes was the great financial crisis in 2008 and the tech bubble in the early 2000s. This is a clear indication of the continued fundamental deterioration of the economy, which sharply contrasts with the overall financial assets that remain at an excessively inflated valuation. To put this historically high PE into context for you, the market typically has a PE on average of 16 times. So that means that investors are willing to pay $16 on average for every $1 of earnings from the S&P 500. So currently the S&P 500 trades at a 25 times PE, meaning that, that the market is significantly overvalued relative to its own historical average. Another concerning factor is that the market is overweight tech right now. Technology is the largest sector weight in the S&P 500. 
The tech sector historically on average makes up about 16% of the sector, but due to Apple and other tech stocks ballooning to large weights within the S&P 500, we are significantly over that average tech sector weight. And currently we're at a 28% weight, meaning that 28% of the S&P 500 is made up of tech stocks. This is a great issue because the sector is most hurt by rising interest rates is tech. Therefore, the S&P 500 is overexposed to a sector which is likely to underperform the market given economic conditions. Another concerning factor is that the yield curve is still inverted. Historically, an inverted yield curve has been viewed as an indicator of pending economic recession. For those that don't know, an inverted yield curve means the interest rate of short-term debt such as the one year or the two year is above the interest rate of long-term debt such as the 10-year treasury. The inverted yield curve has predicted every recession, every single recession since 1969. But one thing that's always consistent is we won't get, get a recession the day after the yield curve inverts. So the yield curve has been inverted for quite some time now, multiple months. Therefore, we it's not shocking to see that the market and the economy hasn't fallen off a cliff right once we got that inverted yield curve. The drop may take time. The last time rates were this high was 2006, and it took two years for that to be felt in the markets and in the economy, which obviously led to the great financial crisis in 2008. So there are many factors working against the stock market right now, and I get no enjoyment reporting them to you. Honestly, I am hoping and praying that I am wrong here and that the market won't fall off a cliff, but it is at least worth noting and going through all of these factors because they're, they're very relevant. And like I said, that inverted yield curve has predicted every single recession since 1969. So why would it be wrong again? Well, it could be. Anything's possible. And don't listen to any single financial markets analyst or professional that says they know anything with absolute certainty. I don't know if the market's going to fall off a cliff over the next six months. I don't know if the market's going to fall off a cliff over the next two years. All I can tell you is that there are significant factors working against the market and are pointing to downside for the market and for the economy. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got some value from it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way. Thanks.